I seem to recall I tried this last time and uh, my audio setup has gotten kind of messed up. So, I believe this is working. I'm going to turn down the game audio j down just a little bit. I, I don't, you know, you, you don't stream for a little bit, you fall, uh, you fall uh, out of the habit. But hey, we have the game up. We have audio. I believe we have game audio. Uh, we have my audio, which is, of course, the most important thing. Hello. There you are. Uh, can we confirm that you can see the game? You can't see me. I don't have a VTube. I may stream again uh, someday, but, you know, today is not the day to mess around with uh, VTubes. Thanks for participating in turn-based Thursday. No worries. I, I love turn-based uh, Thursday. Hello, hello, child of the forest. You have ventured onto my desk and knocked over all my things, as you do. Do you have something to say before we uh, play this game? I can see the game. All right, cool. Um, I'm gonna, so I, I started a game uh, already and I've been playing it for a couple of hours. So I wanted to give a, um, I, guess, I guess a good snapshot of the game uh, and not necessarily just start a new one because uh, though the beginning is very good, uh, I didn't like, we, we don't really have a lot of time. We only have an hour with six ages too. And so I wanted to give you as much of a, a condensed snapshot of the game as possible. This is this is in part of uh, hashtag turn base a Thursday uh, fest. There is a uh, event going on Steam as well as a lot of other content creators participating and playing other games. And I was very uh, privileged to be uh, able to participate as well as uh, be given a code for uh, Six Ages Two go lights going out. This is a sequel to Six Ages, uh, Winds of Wild or something. I can't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have played. I haven't played the first Six Ages. However, I have played um, King of Dragon Pass, which is basically the same game, um, I believe, from the same developers. But uh, I don't know. There's a there's some weird stuff going on there where the it, if I click on the developer, it doesn't show me King of Dragon Pass. But very very similar game. Basically, you're managing a uh, tribe who are following uh, in the footsteps of their ancestors and their gods, uh, the gods like Orlanth, um, and there's a ton of different gods. They all kind of do something different, and you can sacrifice to each one in order to make strategic benefits, profits, gains. You also are managing almost a 4x type system where you're trying to break peace or uh, just diplomacy with other uh, nations, other people who are following the same gods as you or some that are not, um, maybe potentially following in some kind of weird dark chaos gods. Uh, this game is about the fall of the world. Um, the world is basically crumbling away and the gods are dying. And so far, uh, I have three gods that have, oh, sorry, four gods that have died, including my uh, original uh, god, Orlanth, and uh, I think Ar Arnalda as well, but I think mostly Ar Orlanth was uh, like the god I am like a, uh, a, a, you know, belonging to. So that's, that's a very short description of the game, but uh, we play it over the course of seasons. Right now it is late storm season. The weather is unpredictable as forces of life and darkness battle. Speaking of battle, I believe winter is a good time for war. So we're gonna be waging some war. We've I've waged two wars against Fordrum. I'm gonna wage another war against Fordrum uh, until they are uh, maybe no longer um, a threat to us. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call on my alliance with Jernelfi. Hopefully they send us some more forces, so this is a better, uh, a more successful war. Let me see. The Jernelfi uh, sent 15 warriors. We eluded the four drum patrols and our 10 swords and 84 bows are facing only 5 swords and 55 bows. Sandane was glad that their force was weaker. Still, victory would be up to the gods. We would be attacking King... Uh, Brola, Brola Rolf's old foe 
and would be drawing on what our ancestors had learned about fighting mounted adversaries. Sandine noted that the four drum chief was noted for her caution. I'm going to throw some magic at this one, one magic. Uh, we're going to go ahead and plunder. I've been trying to kill as many of them as possible to weaken their forces. Uh, hopefully eventually to, um, basically take them in as a vassal. Uh, it, it's not really crusader Kings, but you know, it's similar in that sense. We basically make them fear us and then uh, eventually we conquer them in a, in a fashion. They become almost like a weird ally. So let's go ahead and proceed with this. We're going to plunder them. Um, they play, they play cautiously. So what we're going to do is, um, could conduct a magic. I, I've been spending magic kind of left, right, and center right now. And, and so I don't know if that's necessarily the good, a good thing to do right now. I think I'm just going to go ahead and skirmish for now. We'll just play it cautiously ourselves. Tried to circle around us, but our missiles took a heavy toll on them. Our, our arrows sang in flight, thanks to Dustal. We've been, uh, I've been making rituals to Dostal, and so therefore our arrows are doing extra damage to them, so that's good. Conserve your strength, take risks to win, take advantage of an opportunity for slaughter. Let's do that. Lianti and the fighters closet, uh, closest to her have managed to cut off a good number of the four drums, and have a good chance of killing all of them. Unfortunately, the enemy are in a defensive position. What should she do? Um... Assign enough warriors to make sure they remain out of the fight and move on. Ignore them and concentrate on... Uh, yeah, let's attack them. Let's uh, weaken, weaken their forces. The four drums cried out for mercy, but Sianti took out a good number of them. Let's... Uh, I like to fight cleverly, especially when we have uh, a good number of bows. I think that that's a good thing to do. They fainted, but we saw through it. Fighting has Baron did at Stormfall helped us. Our choice of tactics helped end things. It's also a good idea to uh, know kind of the past and history of your tribe as well as how they used to fight. And that actually helps them like both for morale and also for tactics. They, they just perform better that way. It was a brief but bloody battle. Our battle magic burned away theirs. We drove the four drums from the battlefield and were able to pl plunder their lands. Our share of the plunder was 19 cows and 13 horses. We took eight cows worth of loot. Aided by the white goddess Shalana Aroy, our auxiliaries kept one warrior from dying and bandaged one of the wounded. Our people were pleased to have struck a blow against the four drums, who were responsible for so many of our woes. The four, four drums, I have decided, is our, like, main nemesis right now, along with the forces of chaos. Ooh, we just got a huge amount of uh, magic there. The king and his recent bride, Janarma, uh, announced the birth of their son, Venef, the barren line of kings, again, again as a male heir, which it has lacked since uh, Iverlantho's sons from his first marriage were killed battling scorpion people look at my boy everlantho declares he will grow up strong of mind and sure of thought when i am gone he will lead the barena uh Berenth listen <laughs> baroness Theli to glories untold since ra riders and rams met and became one god talkers say that this is this auspicious event has increased our clan magic Encourage harmony between royalists and their critics. Celebrate the renewal of the royal line. So you might notice I have a bunch of faces down here. These are kind of like my, uh, kind of like vassals, but really they're my close advisors. They all have uh, strengths and weaknesses, and they also have agendas, potentially. Uh, they will basically encourage me to take certain choices in these manners. And in this way, this game plays kind of like a choose, a choose your own adventure, except it's got more of a 4x heart. So, um, let's see, our king, uh, Iverlantho, says to celebrate the renewal of the royal line. He would say that, wouldn't he? Sandine is our, mostly our combat, uh, oriented character. Says, seek a blessing for Ermel, or Elmel. Might give us the traditional gift attending a royal birth, cows. That would be good. If we could get some more, uh, cows, that would be good for us. That's food, and that's also goods. We can't afford a feast. All hail the Prince of... Okay, he has nothing to say. 
Um, encouraging harmony between royalists and their critics might be good, but oh uh, yeah, cows can't say can't say uh, no to cows. Let's sacrifice. And this is gonna seem counterintuitive, but we're sacrificing goods in order to make the sacrifice for goods. Uh, and we're gonna sacrifice seven goods. That is my stock standard sacrifice. It's a slightly above average. A golden glow surrounded the boy. Yellow-haired cows wandered through our gates. In the later years, the yellow cattle didn't breed true. Truly, they, they, they were a unique gift. So we sacrificed seven cows worth of goods, but we got 30, so that's good. You might notice this Redalda's blanket will move uh, across the screen occasionally. That's a treasure that I have, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but let's, let's go ahead and deal with this next conflict. A mission from the surrounding clan. Oh, they're not very happy with me. Demands compensation for your use of a blessing to divert game from our, their wildlands to yours. You chose this blessing and it has gone on a long time, causing great hunger, they say. For goods worth 20 cows, we will withdraw our complaint. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll talk about this in just just a second. Warning us not to renew the blessing they departed. Hanth stated that we couldn't exactly unbless our hunting. <laughs> I waited until they left to say it, but if they can't hunt, the surroundings deserve to starve. So basically, uh, our Hanth, who didn't originally belong to the ring of uh, advisors, uh, found one day that the gods had blessed him with the ability to draw in wild game from other neighboring cities uh, and other tribes and uh, he asked me like hey uh, do you want me to pursue this gift like do you want me to, to use it because uh, what I'm basically doing is robbing the neighbors of uh, you know their game um, you know up to you really and uh, my advisors are just like you know it could be trouble if uh, the surrounding neighbors uh, you know look into this at all they might come across that you have like given him permission to do this and then they'll know that you've been basically stealing their food um, but I said yeah go ahead I mean it, it only works if they do a, a divination ritual which who knows they, they probably won't do that turns out they did that actually and uh, and so therefore the Sorlang are like hey uh, you've been stealing our food um, so we demand some of it back and that's honestly fair I'll, I'll give it to them here is the sacred time. This is when we choose what rituals we make for the year. Um, these are basically a means of spending magic to give us small buffs to things. It's good to do fields, pastures, wilds. That means we get extra food in theory, although I have yet to see really how to make, take advantage of that. I like to throw some at crafts. Health is obviously good. Um, but uh, I also like to keep a lot of magic in reserve uh, for spending here and there where uh, where it can be spent. Magic is basically like a, almost like a wild card currency. It uh, lets you lets you uh, kind of just chew away, you know, a bad thing occasionally. I'm also going to put one point into war because I've been definitely feeling a little bit more warlike. Got two people hating me, so uh, you know I've got to gotta take care of that we are now now known for being bullies oh no this year saw spiders weaving silver cloth and determined that our crafters will have good luck this year nice our crafters produced a goods worth 87 cows so yeah i think the 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 magic i spend to uh increase these buffs the wild pastures and fields um this is when i basically reap what i sowed so we maintained our shrine this is every time we like make a sacrifice or the shrines that we've built and i'll get to that in a second um require maintenance so we have to keep up with demands it's no surprise that the darshama clan known for rigidly clinging to their outdated ways has fallen on hard times in order to survive we will all need to change i hope they don't take the false road and start falling to the lure of chaos hope so too honestly members of the clan ring are personally popular nice this is good well, I guess we're bullies now, so we may as well embrace this. Um, but let me talk a little bit about... Hold on, my cat is really just trying to get in my way here. Um, I have treasures. Let's talk about treasures. In my uh, archive of treasures, I have Barntar's uh, shovel helps restore pastures. 
Which, I food low, that might be a good thing to do. Horn of Urdox, aids against chaos. Horn of Vingt Vinkot. Uh, while you own this treasure and a true king serves as your chieftain, any clan that ever belonged to Baron's kingdom will love and fear you. Magic Rune attracts the favor of the gods when the worship venture is performed. We should do that. Painted Skull rewards you when you win a raid by fighting fiercely. Oh, interesting. Okay, so next time we do a war, I actually haven't looked through all of these. I've gained a new treasure since I looked at this. Uh, next time we do a raid, we should fight fiercely, and maybe Martin Skull will uh, benefit us. But the one that seems to have the most, like, uh, narrative effect is Redalda's Blanket. Rouses the people when neighbors come calling. Um, I guess that means that basically we, uh, people care a bit more. So it doesn't really have a narrative, um, mechanical difference. It just kind of gives me a buff when people come calling and I can, you know, I get a benefit to, to trying to pacify them. And then we have the trade rune, which helps for trade. So let's do some trading. We are right now in the early sea season, which is when we, uh, prepare and sow our fields. So really what we should do, let's go to magic. And we should make a sacrifice for uh, our crops. We could do Aralda. Um, that is good for uh, for cows. Anila is good. I've already got a um, a full temple built to Anila. She helps me find uh, hidden things, which is important because I am trying to find hidden things, as well as uh, forage for gather more food. So why don't we go ahead and make a sacrifice for a rootal? Do the standard seven goods. Our sacrifice was favorably received. Word among the other clans in the valley is that the four drums have announced a feud against us. Our children are at risk. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Our food situation is desperate. We have asked the gods for their blessings, so we will need to go outside the clan and trade for her. Yeah, uh, I usually hope for the best. And right now, people are optimistic, so uh, this shouldn't be too bad. The Zarhawks would probably give us food if we sent an emissary to collect the favor they owe us. Let's do that then. Zarhawks, huh? They owe us a favor. All right, let's send an emissary. We'll send Rita. She's usually good about this kind of thing. Um, we can send some goods. I don't know, 25 seems like a good number. Zarhawk. Um, send a couple of uh, swords and bows to protect her. And uh, yeah, let's see, let's see how that goes. Our food situation is desperate. All right, all right. Slaughter some of our livestock. Enough for a season. We lost 66 herds. We're kind of comfortable for herds. So the butchers were able to produce a little more meat than expected. We also had a few extra hides. So we got some goods from that. Members of the Varn Rash clan. Again, uh, we are we gain a boost from Rodaldo's blanket. Roll up to your gate in their chariots to issue a demand, backed by threats. They are wheel people, a once widespread culture who, like your rider ancestors, lived long ago in an ancient golden city. When Rodaldo converted your clan to Orland's worship, the com uh, commonalities you had with them became ever less relevant. Your, pro prof uh, your profanation of El Mal, contaminating his worship with that of Orland's Sunslayer, spreads like a disease. It has now damaged our shrine. To redress this blasphemy, you must send a champion to take part in our rite, to defeat the uh, falseness. Should you refuse, we will assault your crumbling fortress with holy fire. Chaos has been eating away at everyone's temples. I could try and rationalize with them. But it looks like, uh, well, two of my delegates are away on official business. One is saying we should refuse, ignore their threats, we are stronger than them. Yeah. They rattled off, repeating their threats, filled with Sendane's furor. The people welcomed their coming attack. Then we would prove with swords what we had set out in words. So I'm not doing so good um, with a lot of my neighbors. I Fordrum like hate us with a passion. We should send some emissaries out to uh, make peace. We're 
we're apparently on good terms with Zarhawk, even though, well, they're, we're on okay terms with them. I, I think I should um, try and turn some of these purple ones a little bit more blue. Like these guys are over here, they're kind of like almost, they're, they're kind of neutral with us. You know, they're like, uh, I guess they're less purple. They're, they're more closer to red, maybe. We could do like last trailing. Let's do last trailing. We have goods to spare right now. Let's send them, send some goods and try and uh, broker peace. The threat of banditry is low. Cool. We are being raided by Varn Rashi. They're attacking because we heaped scorn on them. There are eight chariots with another 112 on foot. Luckily, our patrol spotted them and nine swords and 130 of our bows met them. Let's uh, put, spend a bit of magic on them. Kill as many as possible. So let's charge in. Um, this uh, Hopefully, we, our treasure will uh, help us. Our charge hit the Varn Rashi before they could complete their ritual magic. Berserk attack! Uh, take advantage of an opportunity for slaughter. Ingana and the fighters closest to her have managed to cut off a large group of the Varn Rashi and have a good chance of killing all of them. Unfortunately, the enemy are in a defensive position. What should we do? Assign enough warriors to make sure they remain out of the fight and move on. Without Ingani to guide them, our warriors couldn't keep the Varn Rashi penned up. After a brief, brief skirmish, both sides were again caught up in the main battle. Shoot. Well, let's uh, let's do a berserk attack. Oh, we should have fought fiercely. Damn it. As the fight against the Varn Rashi raiders grinds on, Valnesta, sorry, Valensta spots three of them creeping from your citadel. One furtively hefts an item of some kind. Val Valensta realizes that they've used the cover provided by the battle to steal a treasure from your citadel. Um, send hunters to track them. The sneak thieves attempt to disguise their path proved no match for the skill of our hunters. They easily intercepted the Varn Rashi, recovering the trade rune. Meanwhile, Valensta, distracted, was set upon by three enormous Varn Rashi. She made short work of them. Roaring, our fighters slammed into theirs. This is where we fight fiercely. And our, hopefully our treasure actually helps. They tried to press the attack, but we fought more fiercely. Sandine said that only the gods could say for sure, but our combat ability seems better than theirs. Let's take, uh, we're gonna take risks to win here. They tried to charge us, but broke a chariot axle and got nowhere. Our choice of tactics helped end things. We lost a few thing, a few of us, but uh, wow, they they t they took a heavy blow there. The fighting was fierce. Our combat magic blew theirs away. We drove the Varn Rashi off, and their survivors left without plundering us. Due to their prompt healing, our auxiliaries kept two warriors from dying and bandaged four of the wounded. The Martin Skull granted us, granted us magic. There you go. Because I fought fiercely, the Martin Skull helped us. So where are the Mar uh, Varn Rashi? They're okay. They're right there. They're they're uh, they might ally up with four drums. So we do need to um, try and make some peace with some of our uh, our friends. Let's look at our clan for a sec. One thing uh, I'm never really sure on how to um, find is like how much food do we like? I know how much food we use. Obviously, we're gonna use up like 388. Like we have a lot of people to feed, right? 768 people we have to feed and we only have 127 goods uh, to to feed them with I assume So what we should do is we should do some trading After we send a caravan to each wheel clan we would be able to support more trading routes uh, I'm not sure which ones are part of the trade wheel their chief is Evern. They owe us a favor. We have. A, we want to buy more food. So food and goods are not the same thing. And I'm not really sure. Uh, as some, one thing I have not been able to find is like a representation of how much food we have. But anyway, we want to sell some goods and we want to buy some food. 
We could sell the rune, uh, magic rune, but that wouldn't be a good idea, I don't think. Your emissary, Rita, near the Zarhawk settlement. She brought 25 cows in uh, goods to offer as a gift. Call in a favor. Your emissary, Rita, approaches the Zarhawks, asking them to make good on a favor they owe, owe you. Ask for food. How much do you ask for? The customary amount, enough to feed the clan for about 10 days. Provided us with the food without complaint. Nice. Your emissary, Lorakon, nears the last drilling settlement. He brought 30 cows and goods to offer as a gift. Just give gifts. The last drillings gave lavish praise to our gifts. They toasted us with their feasting hall, drinking weak ale afar into the night, and singing many rousing songs with us. As near as I could tell, they think well of us. Nice. I've visited all of our fields, and I'm starting to get, con uh, get concerned. We've been growing rye and hard corn on them for about five years now. They're just beginning to show signs of exhaustion. The last land rotation was before uh, Everlantho was crowned king. In the next year or so, we, should we need to prepare new fields. At least we can rotate some of our pasture land. Oh my god. A vampire creeps into the citadel, draining all of Sandine's blood. Oh no, Sandine! Before anyone notices its presence. I do this as a gift to the Four Drum Clan, it hisses. Who you have sorely abused with your relentless attacks. Karina leads your warriors to trap it. Humak's powers prevent it from turning into smoke and she destroys it. Only one warrior dies striking this blow against chaos. Promise another attack against the four, so uh, four drums. I, I was going to do that anyway. Also, spread word that the four drums traffic in chaos. Who leads the effort? Um, well, Rita is very good at diplomacy, so let's send her. Send her with a few uh, swords and bows. Chieftains received this news with concern. They get thanked us for telling them, giving gifts worth 12 cows. Still, we lost a member of our, of our ring. That's a heavy blow, honestly. So let's, um, we gotta, we gotta replace them. One thing we can do, one thing I'm trying to do, um, is we, each of these members, uh, worships a different god. Oh, wow, I just realized we lost, like, one of our, um, best combatants. Uh, no, wait. Yeah, our, our, like, our main war, war maker. Uh, I should find someone who worships war. So, Humakt. So I'm looking for this, this cross. Karina worships war right now, so actually we kind of have that covered. No one, we have no one that uh, worships uh, Ermal. What about Elmal? We have uh, our main king worships Elmal. The, the, the reason you want to have someone who worships like the gods you're sacrificing for is because then they have a, a better knowledge of how to perform rituals to those. Like Eralda would be very good. I have, I have, uh, you know, uh, a, not a temple, a shrine. I have a shrine in uh, Aralda's favor, but I don't have anyone who worships them. But then there's also Urox. Help young shepherds grow to adulthood. Helps more lambs survive. Let's uh, let's try and find someone who worships Urox, since I'm getting a bit more war hungry. Um, okay, so we're looking for someone who worships Urox. Is it this one? Bargaining, where's combat? They don't even, they're not any good at combat? That's wild to me. What about Sayanti? She doesn't worship anyone, but she's renowned at combat. There is a uh, Parandel, age 29, combat very good, diplomacy very good. Uh, good food very good leadership good. These are all good. Believe it or not good is not very good <laughs> Believe it or not good is just not very good. You want to have like, you know renowned You know very good <laughs> excellent There's like heroic. I Honestly, I don't know. Hmm. I Kind of want to have Sayanti. She she uh, there's she has a cool kind of story backstory 
story backstory we're, we're in it with redundancy um she kind of came from like a far off land and i uh uh adopted her into my ranks and she's done a very good job so i'll take her, i'll take her in i love the artwork in this game there's a there is like a like i wanted to say a style mismatch here and there but like every single bit of art i've seen in this game is is excellent Sarah Den's stumbling journey through the divine realm leads him to Aranstead. So, uh, this guy has had some, like, wild stuff going on. Hey, Diamond Thorn, how you doing? Nice to have you. Um, th this guy... So, basically, we had people from, like, another dimension, uh, enter our kingdom from, like, a magic portal. I was like, hey, uh, you, you have Sarendin, right? He's, a uh, he's, like important we we need to talk to him about certain things that are very important and so i was like okay sure go ahead take him uh and then he was on the other side and the the people that took him in were really frustrated with him because he's actually super ignorant uh and they're like what well, you don't know anything and he's like no i don't really know anything so anyway he then like you know that was going on and uh that realm entered like a, a like a point of chaos and Serendin found himself at like the throne of the gods the volcano and basically the end of the world uh, and also saw, saw the the mountain that the uh, gods kind of um lived in erupt as a volcano and like explode violently and uh he was like shoot what do i do uh and i apparently am able to, to commune with him in this place and told him hey uh find see if you can find anything interesting like j we we are a people of trying to understand the truth in things so knowing why this is happening would be a great great idea so he did and he managed to escape and now he is back through the divine realm leads him to Aranstead. Though he saw the home of the gods explode, before him lies Aranth's fortress, beset by chaos but still standing. On its walls stands the sun god Elmel, Icar splattered, a spattered shield held aloft. Make your petition and quickly depart, says the guardian sun, for you have entered a place of danger. What does Serendin ask for? The capacity to fight, the capacity to defend a fallen stead, is a choice bad because it is obvious? All right, well, Sarindan wants to lead, although he's not really my... Uh, he, he's not a combat combat person. He was a crafter. <laughs> he was a... He's a carpenter. Why does he want to fight? All right, well, we'll, we'll give it to him. Sometimes you want to give... You have to give people what they want so that they, it improves their morale. The Selmel granted... Seridan uh, followed the gods' advice and made haste from besieged Aranstead. But Talokan sniffed him out and pumpkin head set upon him. Seridan escapes them, heading towards the present. Deeper into the past. Okay. The chaos creatures sniffed after him, but lost the trail. Unlike other clans, the Bingles' hands have not forgotten their king. No, indeed, they have not. Saradin is, is gone. Ba like, back in time. So what were we doing? We were doing something important. I think I was going to make a... This is late Earth season. Time to harvest. Bring in the harvest and prepare for the cold. Why don't we uh, do some magic? Protection, steadfast, docile, sure shot, tracking. This would be good if we do some exploration. Sure shot is like very important though. I, I can't really afford to lose that. Do we have any new spirits? It seems our trade wind has uh, lost, uh, has expired. I, I had a trade wind. These are just spirits in our local realm. You know what we should do actually is we need to do a venture. I, I only get two of these a year. And uh, it's it's really important to take advantage of them. Convert pastures to fields. We've been asked to do exactly this, so we should probably do that. Or maybe we can rotate. Is there one for rotating? Scour for bandits. Defense, crafting, combat training, ceremony. Increase clan magic and help with an 
an otherworld ritual. No, I think we should com uh, convert pastures to fields. Hervarna led the clan in the laborious work of clearing poisonous weeds from some of our grazing land. Then it was as, uh, a much easier task to consecrate the newly cleared fields in memory of the Barley Mother and the Earth Mother. Those are dead gods. I believe the Barley Mother might not be, but definitely Earth Mother is dead. At least we have every reason to believe that is true. The old fields became grazing land for our sheep. Our caravan is back from the Blazing Runners. We weren't able to trade at all. They didn't think much of the decoration of our goods. Oh, oh these guys again. I've uh, met these people before. They carry around this disc, which is their only connection to their god now. Another weary band of Dara Happen travelers arrives at Berenstead with an offer. Apparently, they're from a different city than the last Dara Happen visitors. Okay, different people, but same disc. They wish to worship alongside your Elmal devotees. Their solar god, they say, is close kin to your faithful guardian deity. This worship will show him where they are so that he may protect them in their journey. In return, he will grant a blessing called the Sun Scope, aiding you against raiders for at least a year. They call their god Antirius, which you assume is their name for Yelmalio, a rival sun god from obscure writer myths. Okay, so they worship a rival god. If we help them, we might actually piss off our current god. They might not be super keen on this. Ask instead for an, off an offensive blessing. All right, the, the last, you know, the least they can do is turn us down. Yamelo, Yamalio also wields a spear, they said. Do we give them a gift? Sure, we'll give them some gifts, some goods. I try not to give any of my herds because that's food. We'll do 20 goods. That's like standard fare. Probably too much, to be honest, but they said that our, oh, that our fervor for the sun aided them, granting a more powerful version of the Amalio spear than they expected. For their part, Yamalio found them again, and they were joyful. Good for them. I'm glad for them. So we have two ventures going on, correct? Crafting and converting pastures to fields. Um, we are currently in the dark season. Time for war. We might, uh, we might fortify. Might be a good idea as well. Stake perimeter. Costs 40 goods. We can afford that. We, uh, we have new enemies, and so fortifying is a good idea. All fortifications built. Cannot predict the weather well enough to say. Well, now that we have all of that built, raided by Varnrash, we should probably strike back against them. But for the time being... I would like to fight, uh... Oh, that, that is a recruit new people. We don't want to do that. I want to do a raid against the four drums, believe it or not. Send in some more bows. Well, maybe not that many bows. I'm going to ask, um... Well, I've, I've called on Jel, uh, Jernelthi a bit too much. Maybe we call in on Burn Peak. Burn Peak sent 19 warriors. That's amazing, actually. The four drum patrols detected us, and our 10 swords and 89 bows are facing 14 swords and 104 bows. We, we would be fighting against King Brolarulf, Brolarulf's old enemy, and we would be using what our ancestors has, have learned about fighting mounted adversaries. Karina noted that the four drum chief was noted for her caution. We'll put in like one point of magic here. We're gonna plunder. Um, pr reserve one in seven fighters, conduct a magical ritual. Let's um, charge. Our charge hit the four drums before they could finish their magical, magical preparation. Let's, um, well, where's that uh, fierce attack? Decide the fate of disabled foes. Nearly a dozen four drum warriors have been temporarily blinded by Elmal's dazzling light. The sun god has obviously responded to our war priests. Take advantage of the opportunity to attack them. We struck down 12 of our foe, praising Elmal. Other four drums came to their aid, cursing us. Take advantage of the opportunity to attack them. Fight fiercely. They fought fiercely, but not as fiercely as us. The battle began to swing our way. 
Karina said that nothing was certain, but our fighting skill seemed better than theirs. Press the attack. We, uh... Oof. Four drum warriors make way for a strange new combatant to lumber onto the field. The rotting corpse of a mammoth. A grinning third mouth leering from its skull. They're taking advantage of their chaos magic. Thunders towards you, stomping one of your bows. Your foe's participation in obscene chaos rites as well... Uh, is well known to you, so this comes as no surprise. Terror freezes your warriors in place. What does Karina do? Call on Elmal to harden your shields. Call on Humakt to fill your swords with death. Call on Urox to fill your weapons with searing force. Uh, I believe Urox is good against chaos, so that would be a good choice. Urox hot wind blew across the battlefield and into our weapons, feeling the presence of the Chaos Smiter. The monster turned to flee. This merely made it e easier for Karina to fell it with a single holy blow. It, it's, I get, you know, it really pays off to know a little bit about uh, the tools at your disposal. Press the attack. We're, we're gonna win this. They waited for an opportunity, but we gave them none. We gained the upper hand. Fight fiercely. We could not hold their ground against our push. It was soon over. It was a bitter fight. Their battle magic was greater than ours, but we were not dismayed. We drove the four drums from the battlefield and were able to plunder their lands. Our share of the plunder was 28 cows and 21 horses. We took 10 cows worth of loot. Due to their prompt healing, our auxiliary saved six warriors from dying and healed five of the wounded. The Martin Skull granted us magic. Our four are, sorry, our people were pleased to have struck a blow against the four drums who were responsible for so many of our woes. So we, we dealt a quite a big blow to them, actually. We only wounded a few. Uh, sorry, we, we wounded a lot more. We only killed a few. We also lost a couple of our bows, but that's okay. We can spare that. The less, what? The lessons I have learned today will stand me in good stead when I next, uh, when next I battle chaos. Okay. Illness has swept through the clan. Oh no. One in ten has fallen prey to the sickness that causes shaking, gray, grayish skin, and agonizing pain. Lower speakers say that disease has grown stronger as chaos tightens its grip on the world. Some people say that, um, propitiating, what is that word? Malia, goddess of pestilence, would persuade her to free us from the disease. Other call, uh, Others call this idea a fool's bargain at best and terrible crime at worst. No, no, no. We call on Shal uh, Shalona Arroy, goddess of healing. She is uh, she is good for, for curing us. We don't want to call, uh, call on weirdo extra disease gods. We don't, we don't um, negotiate with terrorists, you know? You perform a, str a stronger rite that risks the integrity of your shrine. Risky rites that go poorly can result in damage to the shrine or temple, though they do increase the odds of success. Sure. Nice. Do you, um, Shalana Arroy ended the epidemic. Very good. So, uh, it would probably be a good time to still, um, like, do some raiding. Can we gain any more swords, though? New swords need three cows worth of equipment. I wonder if we should herd raid. I haven't really done that yet. Oh, we don't have a lot of bows to spare for an actual raid, so we should um, take time to uh, gain gain uh, things back. Early storm season, the weather is unpredictable as forces of life and darkness. Well, why don't we uh, do some more magic? We have a little bit of magic to spare. Oh, you know what? Well, it's I don't know if maybe it's too cold. <clears throat> we could try doing some exploration. That would be probably a good idea. Search for spirits. We could search for spirits. We could also forage. It's easier to find foods food outside any clan lands, though not too far to bring back. Can only take place in known lands. All right, let's uh, let's go like right here. A little bit close to four drum, but you know, they're kind of in the center of things. We could do another exploration. Send a, send a, I don't know. 
How about over here? Uh, again, let's do some foraging. We've got good foragers. They're very good with uh, getting food. Oh no, the duck people. The duck people are back. I love the duck people. They suck so much, but they're awesome. I love them. A duck trader acting as emissary for the beast folk gifts you with decorative bones and teeth worth 17 cows. Don't trust them. Well, maybe trust them. I don't know. They're actually, they're, they're, they're a good lot, but don't, don't, uh, don't mess with them. Duck people can absolutely destroy you. My furred and feathered friends recognize you for a wildness and ferocity that rivals our own. Uh, remind the people that wildness has its drawbacks. Have the king pay eloquent tribute to the duck. Have the ring pay eloquent tribute to the duck. Um, that's what the king advises. Of course, he would say that because he doesn't want to pay tribute to the duck. Uh, of course, Karenna is also saying have the ring pay tribute to the duck. Um, I'm going to have the king pay tribute to the duck. Do not take the duck lightly. They are a force to be reckoned with. The duck waggled his beak in a manner all found congenial. Our leader basked in admiration. And Ganna died of old age. She made her family swear not to cut corners on the funeral rites so that she would not come back from the dead. We will all miss her talent for reading and leading people. Well, that's a bummer. Last year, 29 babies were born. We initiated 20 children as adults. The clan has 52 fewer people, 39 fewer head of cattle, and three fewer horses than last sacred time. We are sufficient in livestock and have many horses. Our crafters produced goods worth 92 cows. Our seasonal market made a profit of 44 cows worth of goods. Maintaining our shrine and temples took 16 cows and, uh, and goods worth 32 cows. We host too few spirits. We should probably get some more spirits, huh? Our priests felt that our standing among the other clans would rise no matter what foolish thing we did. We are known for being bullies. Yeah, yeah we are. Let's, uh, speaking of which, let's put some more, uh, points on war. I, I like to do crafts. Probably not a great idea. Let's do exploring as well. Shouldn't do too many things. Like these ones at the top, I believe they have an effect no matter what you do. Crafts, you really kind of have to lean into as you, you do war, of course. You have to actually make use of it or else it's not worth anything. And exploring. So this is basically me committing to doing crafting, exploring, and war. We could also put some points in ritual. Uh, but then again, we also have to do some rituals in order for that to have any effect. So... Owl spirits came to recognize our pursuit of the truth, gifting us with magic. Nice. The foragers and I have returned from Alastraling lands. We had a hard time staying unseen. We only brought back a little food. Next time we should avoid land claimed by another clan. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Okay, so let's get our ventures started. Uh, well, we're still converting pastures to fields. Herding, pay extra attention to the clan's cattle and sheep, increases herds. Hunt food from the wildlands, less effective during the dark season. Well, it isn't the dark season right now, so let's go ahead and do that, maybe. Um, we could also share exploration. Might make, uh, you know, actually do some diplomacy with the other clans. We visited a number of clans in the valley over several weeks. They listened to our stories of exploration with rapt attention. They were particularly impressed by the shrine at Lake Invarna, in, in, Inverus. The Burn Peak clan told us they had heard of primitive goat herders living to the north. Emissaries of the Lastraling clan hail sentries at your gate. They demand compensation for the death of their sword, Maniski, recently slain by your warrior Karina. Um, Karina says that she was within her rights to lay Maniski low. He started the fight far from Lasterling lands. I merely finished it. Our warrior acted with full justification. I don't really want to make another enemy. I, I understand Karina is not going to be pleased with me, but I am going to grant them traditional compensation. Properly concluded, they left. I, I don't need more enemies. All right, so we have ventures. We have our spear, good relations, omen. Um, you know what? We should probably do some uh, relationing. 
seems like last uh, lastraling is not super content with us so we could make try and broker peace with them um i'm not one thing i'm not sure about is like who who belong to the ring is is it all these underlined ones i think that might be it actually so maybe we should visit um the ones i have been missing so bring some uh goods your emissary rita nears the Pro, uh porganasi village she brought 20 cows worth of goods to offer as a gift just give gifts they hold us in high esteem. Nice. Um, that's good. Can we? Well, uh, we 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 should probably also visit surrounding. There's also uh, or Marth. Let's send one to them as well. I had hoped to act as our emissary to the Old Marth clan, but we could not even find them. Eventually, we figured out that their land had vanished, and the Old uh, oral mar things along with it. Wow, they're just gone, huh? Word reaches you of a trade with the Ar Tarama clan struck with chaos cultists. Wheels from somewhere north promised that Ampalam, god of slave takers, would double their store of valuable goods in exchange for 10 of their strong, healthy young adults. The, the Ar Tarame agreed to and carried out the shocking devil's bargain. Convince them to hunt and slay the Ampalam cultists. Demand that they slay the cultists. Find and slay the slave takers. Sure. We'll send Karina. Send a healthy amount of troops. Karina found them by following the sound of creaking axles. She outmaneuvered them, toppling their chariots on top of them. Their outraged captives strangled the uh, Ompomalites with their own chains. Two of our warriors sustained wounds. They thanked us and returned to their home. We were willing to be slaves to our, save our kin, but we were starting to have second thoughts. You yeah, know, kidding. So, th these dark ma marks on the map, by the way, um, are signs of the world, like, crumbling away. So it looks like the Pork <laughs> Porganosi are uh, maybe in trouble. <laughs> Um, not great. You know what we should do? We should do an exploration for some more spirits. We were being raided by four drums. There are 103 riders in total. They slipped past our patrols and we could only raise five swords and 65 of our bows in time. Oh no. We would be chasing with King... Okay. Um... Karina noted that the four drum chief was noted for her caution. Yeah, I know. Let's uh, throw a bunch of magic on this. Drive them off. Conduct a magi magical ritual. Uh, battle glow firing up your forces to win. Um, fire hoof allowing your horses to fight with you. We will not attack today if you pay us goods in the value of 20 cows. Sure. Try to negotiate. Their emissary replied, Perhaps if you had stayed true to the old ways, we would talk, but we only negotiate with the followers of Hyalor. Uh, Pay the tribute. They took our wealth and left. Sucks. Not a fan. Um... We are in the Earth season. We should probably uh, do some magic. We're looking for some more spirits, but we gotta we gotta make some rituals. I keep trying to find oh extra food via grain. I want to find some more uh, some extra gr uh, food. Calf blessing, milk blessing. Let's do a milk blessing. Thanks for the stream. I'll be heading to the next slot, but of course you are most welcome to keep going as 
all right thank you very much I, i'm probably gonna end it pretty soon this um this this is a game you can play for hours i've been playing for hours up to this point even um and just like every minute of it feels like it, it's got a great sense of continuity like there's all these different stories that are going on and it's hard to stop because you want to see where they're going I, I might i might go for like another 20 minutes and then i'm gonna call it for now take it easy thanks for joining for all that received their sacrifice favorably. By moving backward from the destruction of the spike, Saradin eventually reaches an earlier, better time in the mortal realm. He uh, went back to the first game. <laughs> he witnesses the building of Berenstead. The people and dwarves he meets regard him as some kind of spirit, if they perceive him at all. Of the great person, uh, personages of the day, who does Saradin take the greatest inspiration from? Well, Rodelda is pretty good. She, I believe, is the horse god. Estia Broadback, Keeper of the Stores. Carver of the Story Wall. Akkar Manyfoot, Baron's Senior Emissary. Hmm. Let's go with Rodelda. Oh no, Rodelda. Mm, Rodelda is like diplomacy? I guess horse and diplomacy. He glimpsed the magic that would one day make her a goddess. Then the dwarves building Baron's fort detect Saradin's presence. They tried to capture him and reduce him down to fuel for their machines. They stuck, sucked out a good portion of his essence. The shock sent his body, if not all of his soul, somewhere else entirely. Hope he's okay. Wandering worshippers of the Orla Orlanthi Annex, Alinx god, Yinkin, stop to offer you a blessing to protect your storehouses from rats. Chaos rats, regular rats, our magic will stop them all. In exchange, they ask for goods worth 20 cows. Sure. I'll uh, even invite them for a feast. Neither too much nor too little. Phantom cats bolstered the efforts of your own Alinxis. At the feast, the Yinkin folk performed acrobatic feats and contested with our hunters in feats of dexterity. Some worried that we were eating more food than the cat blessing would preserve. Probably true. Um, increases the fertility. Let's do another blessing. Let's do like a cat, uh, calf, no, calf blessing. We're back from searching the northeast. We were able to capture a scouring wind spirit. It helps fight chaos. Oh, nice. A shrine to Humakt will help us any time we fight the undead. Also, I, I had a, hadn't occurred until now to me that uh, probably if we build a, um, a shrine to Humakt, we can also win some battles more easily. Uh, these become more expensive, but we have goods to spare, so that would be okay. But then we also have to do annual maintenance. Still, it's cheaper than doing uh, sacrifices. Oof. Again, I love the art in this game. It's like insanely good. Your lower keepers discover that chaos corrupted moths have eaten large holes in your story tapestry. This embroidered fabric contains the saga of your clan during its rider era. It stores the memories, magic, and ancestral connections of the period from the Golden City, Exodus, to Baron and Rodalda's wedding. Without it, Doresta says, your ancestral magic will wane. Call on ancestral spirits to repair the tapestry. I'd usually take Rita's uh, word for it, honestly. Call on bird spirits to hunt the chaos moths. Call on Urox for strength against chaos. Let's uh, ask our ancestral spirits. I think I have a pretty good connection with them since I've been doing pretty much everything they want. Remembering their past sorrows and triumphs, the spirits of our ancestors revow, re rewove, rewove, sorry, devoured threads, restoring the tapestry. Those with a special connection to our past were strengthened and our god talkers felt the magic of ancestral beings. We got some extra magic for that. I'm gonna go ahead and build another shrine to Humakt. Do we have anyone on our... Yeah, we have Karina is a... Uh, belongs to, to Humakt. So we'll build another of these. And now we uh, we can basically throw these around when, when we want. Sword fights with a strength of two. Seal bonds between clads allowing another ally. Let's do um, battle luck. Are we... We're in early storm season. So let's do some war. 
Or let's try and raise some more troops. You're only able to raise two warriors. While there's an opening to the god's war, you can send a party to cross using the map screen. A glow leading to the divine realm has been spotted to the northeast. Our ancestors uh, could only get to the other side by performing a rite. This was dangerous enough. Now it's possible to step directly into the god's war. But that is not a good or safe thing under assault by chaos. This holy plane of existence is damaged and unstable. Journeys there offer significant reward, but much greater risk than exploring the world around us. Some openings to the gods' war appear for a few moments only, but omens say this one will remain for a while. Explorers felt two separate runic resonances, hinting at the nature of the deities that might be found on the threshold. The horse rune and a rune no one recognizes. We might have as long as six seasons to send a mission there. The party we sent to forge to the east a year ago has not returned. Hanf and his party must be presumed dead. No, Hanf! It's unfortunate that Zarlan is no longer in the sky to watch over our foraging. People clamor for Dresta, who can see into the spirit realm and is one of the clan's wisest individuals, to join the clan ring. Whenever the ring makes a decision, they say Dresta would have done it differently. When they fail, they say that her spirits would have perceived the right way. When they succeed, they say the spirits would have aided her even more. All right, put her on the ring, sure people cheered sometimes you gotta follow the will of the people with Hanf gone his game blessing has dissipated our hunting productivity has gone back to what it was before maybe that's for the best um I thought we were gonna put what's her name on the what, what, what I can't oh Dresta all right let's put Dresta on the uh, ring Vanessa died of old age. Her family were not not very sorry to see her go as she was difficult to live with. None of us will forget her ability to drive a hard but fair bargain. All right, that's another year gone by. Um, the clan has 11 more people, two fewer head of cattle, and 15 more horses than last sacred time. We are sufficient in livestock and have many horses. Um, our crafters produce goods worth 66 cows. Our seasonal market made a profit of 39 cows worth of goods. Maintaining our shrines and temples took 21 cows and goods worth 42 cows. I, I noticed we we have we get a lot of cows, but then we lose them all. Sorry, goods. Just goods. Uh, the shears the seers had visions of a horse with a white blaze. Almal wanted us to raid before we were attacked ourselves. We are known for being bullies. Yeah, I wonder why. Let's do two points in war since we're definitely going to have some wars. And uh, do these guys up here. Um, let's do one point in ritual. I haven't really been taking advantage of the crafting one. The Varn Rashi were recently the target of a slave raid conducted by a distant rider clan. Several dozen of them were carried off. I fear this isn't the last we've heard of slave raiding. Emissaries of the Sagorin clan brought Saradin back to us. They found him half dead on the edge of their lands before lapsing into his present half dead state. He told us uh, he told of sustaining an injury from dwarves during the Baron era. Do you gift the Sagorin clan? Yeah, I do. Give him a uh, stock standard seven goods. Uh, probably I'll give him more ten goods. And like I don't know, ten hertz. This year's crops have already failed. Some sort of chaos worm slithering, slithered, slithered through the fields, rotting the seedlings. The farmers are doing their best to salvage things, but we will probably take in an ab about half as much as a normal harvest. At least we have enough grain left to plant again. So a second time. A few of the new seeds were afflicted, but most of them began to mature. The late planting would not bring in a, in a bounteous harvest, but it would be better than what we had expected. Okay, um, I'm gonna call it there. I know I'm only an hour, but uh, that was kind of my time slot. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult thing showing off a game like Six Ages, uh, because it's the kind of game you really just want to sit down and play for like hours so you can see some of these subplots play out. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I haven't been streaming lately, so um, I, but I wanted to take part in the turn-based uh, best Thursday turn-based 
Thursday Fest. And I thank them very much for letting me participate um, and uh, for allowing me to play this awesome game. I've, uh, I've bought the first one. I actually wouldn't mind doing series of them. I did have a very short run series of uh, King of Dragon Pass, but uh, it ended prematurely because there wasn't much call or interest for it. Um, but if there's much call for this, if uh, this gets, you know, seen, then uh, I may do some more stuff. I have played games like this, like War Sim was very much in the same kind of uh, line as this. Hey, Mimesis. Hope you have a good week and weekend. Thank you very much, Mimesis. I appreciate you showing up. Even uh, even for the one hour stream, I really appreciate it. Thank you. But anyway, um, I'm going to end the stream now. And I hope you all have a good rest of the weekend and uh, good week. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.